Okay, good evening, everyone. I am Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pusher of Tears to Breakthrough Ministries and Conference, and I'm here with Brene, Brene Fryer, and we're going to be talking about bitterness tonight. Actually, it's Friday night, so normally on Fridays, I do my life after, life after abuse, life after divorce, life after trauma, life after loss, whatever your life after is, so we're going to be touching on that as well. Um, both Renee and I have experienced, um, well, survived and thrived through domestic violence. So this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. So, um, but we're going to be talking about bitterness and, and um, because I definitely lived that life for, for, for a season. <laughs> so, um, but I'm just going to open up in prayer and then Renee, can you read our scripture? Um, in Hebrews. So Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. We just thank you. We just praise you. We just, we just glorify you, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to share um, on bitterness, Lord God. We know it is not your desire that we be bitter and, and, and um, you know, um, we know bitterness turns into, um, could, could turn into anger and rage and, and cause all types of uh, destruction and all kinds of bad behaviors were God. And so right now, and I just pray for anybody that's dealing with or battling with um, or struggling with bitterness as a result of uh, trauma or, or any type of abuse or, or anything that could have happened in that life that would lead them down that road of bitterness. I come against that spirit of bitterness. I come against that spirit of um, of rage, you know, the Bible clearly tells us, Lord God, you said that it's not a sin to get angry, but it's a sin when we allow that anger to turn into um, something else, something deeper. And so right now, uh, we're just going to have a discussion. We thank you, God, for this opportunity again. I call it all done in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Amen. Renee, if you could read our scripture. So I am going to read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Okay. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Mm, amen. <clears throat> amen. Verse so 14. Our, thank you, Renee. So I want to read, um, you actually gave us a definition of, um, I want to read a little bit of the notes that, that, that you took for, um, the title of this actually is How to Overcome Bitterness, right? And right. so, um, but you did actually give a, um, a definition and bitterness is seen as a uh, justifiable response after some kind of harm or injury has, has happened. And, and I definitely agree with that because just to give a little bit of my story and I actually posted something recently about bitterness, a message that I did talking about bitterness and sharing uh, my story on bitterness, when I left my abuser and I really thought I was okay. I thought, okay, I, I left, I'm good now. I can get on with my life. Everything's going to be fine. You know, and I just went on to raise my son and I didn't realize how bitter I was. I didn't, I, I didn't know I was angry, but then, you know, I also knew that angry, just being angry was normal. It was a perfectly healthy emotion considering everything I went through. So I was okay with being angry, but I didn't understand that I had allowed bitterness to take over, right? <laughs> and so, and in addition to the bitterness, there was rage. So, so it, was like, it was like bitterness, anger, and then a lot of rage. And so um, and this is, I actually shared this recently, for those of you who follow me. And I, and I was sharing a story with my son and I think he must, must, must have been about seven years old. I left his dad when he was five. So he probably was about seven and I had my nieces, my niece and nephew came over 
and 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 because they were real close with my son and they were they were playing a game. You know, our children play a game. And and what they were doing is they were emulating, they were mocking the adults in their life. So when I walked past the room, I saw them mocking different family members. And I thought it was funny, it was cute because they were they were on point. Right. You could <laughs> I could look at them and tell exactly who they were emulating. <laughs> but so it was funny, but I didn't let them see me laugh, but it was funny. But right. then when I walked past the room again, I saw them emulating me when I was angry. And it was not a pretty sight. Wow. It was not a pretty sight. And I said to my son, I said, I know you're not mocking me. And he says, yes, mom, this is what you look like when you're angry. And my niece said, yes, auntie, that's what you look like when you're angry. My nephew said, auntie, that is you when you are angry. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And they were, if you would have seen them, it was like they were tensed up. They were shaking their hands. They were, you know, it was so crazy. And I said, oh my God. I said, if this is how my son and my niece and nephew sees me when I'm angry, that is not cool. That is not cool because in my mind, I took him from a toxic environment and my whole goal was to put him in a safe, healthy environment. But the problem is I wasn't healthy because mm. I had all this anger, I had all this rage, I had all I was harboring all this unforgiveness, all this bitterness, all this stuff that turned into when I got angry, I was on a whole other thing. So, wow. um, so yeah, so it, I, I realized at that point that I had to get some help mm -hmm. because I couldn't do it on my own. Right. And I, obviously I couldn't just let it go. So I, and a, and a lot of people would have probably got upset with the kids, but I can't get upset with the kids. But one thing I love about children, I know like young people, they will show you you. <laughs> yes. They sometimes get upset. But I needed them to show me me. And I and I and all these years later, I never forgot that. And so I had to do the work and I had to get the help that I needed. And so I want to just ask you, Renee, um, what caused your bitterness? Um, well, one of the major things I think that caused bitterness for me was um the death of my marriage due to abuse. Mm. Um, abuse in and of itself, no matter which form it comes in, robs. And I think I had put so much hope and so much, uh, I look forward and had so many plans uh, for marriage. You know, I wanted a family and I wanted a beautiful home and a loving husband, like all those things that we, we dream of. And when you walk down an aisle and get married, you don't think or expect that you're going to go through that. And so for me, the abuse was the death of a dream. It was disappointment. It, it was being let down. It was, you know, I looked forward to this all of my life and, and now this happens. You know, you've done this to me. And I felt hated. And so it, that's what led me down the path of bitterness was the abuse, but not just that. I think the sting when my bitterness really started to kick in, even though I didn't see it then, was after I left my abuser, I started to look around and see people getting married, people getting engaged, people having babies, people going to bridal showers, and you see people um, baby showers and and, and things like that. And it was a, a sting to me because I felt like that part of my life was over. I felt like abuse robbed me. I felt like it stripped from me the, the very dream that I looked forward to. And I was angry and I was hurt. And it hurt me to see other people happy. Not that I was necessarily jealous of them. I wouldn't call it jealous, but I always would look at them and I would say, but that's not fair. Why can't I have that? What's wrong with me that right. I can't have that? I look forward to that. I deserve that too. And I just started to lash out mm -hmm. at other people. I vented consistently. And, and there's nothing wrong with venting, but I think when you're bitter, like right. as I was, 
you consistently vent negatively and, yeah. and you keep retelling the story in such mm. a negative way that for me, I forgot all about the role that I played in it. I was not willing to accept responsibility for, for my part. Now, am I saying that I deserve or anyone else deserves to be abused? No, but at the same time, I needed to take responsibility in terms of, for example, you know, why did I choose to stay as long as I did? Um, you know, the fear of being alone, the fear of not being able to make it. Like those are the things that I had to take responsibility for. Um, not trusting in God enough to, to be able to say, you know what, I'm just gonna trust God, step out on faith and leave this unhealthy relationship. And and it it did. I even lashed out. I was so bitter to the point where one couple, um, like a brother and sister in Christ to me, they had had a baby. And during the whole pregnancy, you know, I was, I didn't pay attention to the signs or the social cues. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't, but I used to always rub her belly and I was always so excited and so happy for her. And I felt like at that time, because I had this thing over here in my life that stripped me from everything, I would never be able to experience that. So I was basically living my life through other people. Mm -hmm. And I was rubbing her belly and all the time and everything like that. So then when the baby was born, um, I was constantly texting her and her husband, you know, out of, out of love, you know, out of joy, communicating with them, not realizing that people need their space and their privacy. And um, she finally, you know, said something to me, like basically, uh, you know, basically telling me I needed to wake up. Like, you know, we appreciate all the love. We appreciate all the text and this, this and that. But right now, Brene, we just want to spend time with our family. And I took offense to that in my bitterness because um, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. I didn't know what it was like to have uh, family time, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, I didn't have a husband who stuck up for me, who looked out for me. And I, I took offense to that. It stung, it hurt. So I lashed back out at them mm -hmm. in a way that was very nasty to the point where it damaged my relationship with them, right. where it took years and years for them to truly for forgive me. And they have forgiven me. Thank God for that. They have forgiven me but things will never be the same because of the things that I did in my bitterness. Right. Right. So, you know, that yeah. that's what it was for me. I was angry. I was hurt. Um, I just felt robbed and I won't say that I felt like nobody else deserved it, but I felt like it was my turn and I started to become emotionally ruthless. Like I could care less if another person was, unhappy or miserable because I took whatever it was from them. It was my turn and I got sick and tired of not being happy and seeing everybody else happy. Hmm. So I just did whatever I wanted to do. Now that's that's bitter. <laughs> and that's, <wasn't>, that's bitter. <laughs> it wasn't taking on yeah. the consideration of other people's feelings. Right. Because they're not responsible for your happiness. Like people, other people are not responsible for our happiness. They're not responsible for, you know, our, um, the, the bad the bad things that happened to us i mean unless they directly did it right or something and these people didn't do that right so so but that's what bitterness is but that's exactly what bitterness is you can't be happy for anybody else you can't celebrate anybody else you know it's it's a very selfish emotion because it's really all about what you think is supposed to be yours and what you think should have happened to you or or, or what you may want I'm not just saying you, but I'm just saying anybody who's bitter, if you notice, it's it's all about them comparing themselves to somebody else, comparing their life to somebody else. And, and because they may feel like somebody has something that they never had or that they always, always wanted, because they're bitter, they look at that person as, you know, um, they, they just don't, they, they can't find it in their heart to be happy for somebody. They can't find it in their heart to to celebrate somebody else. And, and, and so God does not bless any, any of that. <laughs> he doesn't bless any of that because, you know, we are supposed to be happy and joyful for people and celebrate other people's wins and other people's, um, you know, the, the, the great, the good things that happen in people's lives. But when you're bitter, you don't see any of that. 
And so, and I know for me, it didn't really affect me in that way bitter. I think what was, I guess the, the way the bitterness affected me was I just felt the struggle of being a single parent because that's my thing. But I, I did not want to be a single parent. I did not right. want to, and then I all I never wanted, people who know me know this about me. I never wanted a lot of children by different fathers. Like, so that's always been a thing for me. So me being married was supposed to fix that. <laughs> so now right. I, I, I find myself single, struggling to raise my son on my own. That's where my bitterness came in because I had mm-hmm. to work extra hard because I had to always try to figure out if the boss said, well, because back then I worked a traditional nine to five. But if my boss said you have to do overtime and I have to pick my, and I get off and work at five and I pick my son up at six. And now you're saying I have to do overtime until seven or eight. I'm stressed out, <laughs> you know? And so that's where my bitterness came in. Just the whole having the struggle on my own and, and not really having his dad to step in or being able to say, okay, can you pick him up? I have overtime, you know, and sometimes he would say he would pick him up and he wouldn't pick him up. So I was so stressed out and that's where my bitterness, that's where I was so bitter. And um, so, oh my God, have you heard me talk to other women? Well, it's so funny because bitterness will attract bitterness. Bitter people will attract other bitter people. And I remember just having these conversations with all of my bitter people that I had attracted at that time. And we would just sit down and compare notes. Oh yeah, he's no good. Oh yeah, girl, you need to take him to court. You need to do this. Like everything was always negative, 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 mm-hmm. negative, negative. And oh my, it was just when I think back, it was just I, I would not have wanted to be around me. I really would not. Right. But Same I did, here. But I did have negative people, negative bitter people that loved hanging around me because they they we kind of fed off of each other's energy, mm-hmm. and 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 that's why. Um, now that I am totally healed, delivered, delivered and set free, I, I can't do that. I cannot, like, I don't, if, if I come in, in contact with somebody that I know that's just bitter, I love you. Um, if there's something I could do to help you, I'll do that. But I can't have this dialogue with you, that negative conversation, because that that's a whole spirit <laughs> that will consume you. Okay. Yes. And, and And it's ugly. It's ugly. Yes, it is. It's very it's ugly. ugly and there's nothing cute about it. Yes. And um, but I definitely lived through that. And so I, I totally get it. But um, and it's hard to recognize it. It's hard to recognize. Well, I think when you're bitter, you don't see that you're bitter. Like when I was bitter, I think I had one person tell me that I was. But for one at the time, I didn't really truly fully understand what bitterness was, what it meant to be bitter. And I never saw myself as being bitter. I just thought I was angry. Like I was just telling you um, yeah. before before that in the Tyler Perry's movie, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman, she was bitter, but she was in denial about it. And her, her co-star, and I can't think of his name for the life of me, said to her, you know, you, you don't have to be so bitter. And she right. poured the drink and threw the drink in his face and said, I'm not bitter I'm just mad as hell right 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 <laughs> and right. I've, I've been there and I felt like that like, I've been know, there too to tell me that I was bitter or to tell me that I was miserable would make me angry at them because I always felt like well how dare you tell me that when that's not true because I didn't see myself as being bitter but I think you come to a point in your life and in all honesty it was nobody but God that helped me come to a point in my life because I don't yeah. think I could have done it by myself. No, you can't. You can't. Because you're so blind and you're so hard-headed and you're just wallowing in it like you. nobody but God can snatch you up out of it. Right. And it, it God had to show me my ugly self. Yeah. Like he actually gave me a glimpse of this monster. And I was like, oh God, that's me? I look like that? I don't well, want I, to I told you the children way. show the children show me me. <laughs> yeah, and God will speak to you through kids. I mean, he, he me, will. I, like, I work with children, and they definitely they do showed show me, me me. Okay, all the bitterness, all the anger, all the rage, and that was the thing. Like I remember rage, and see, and that's the thing we have to be careful because that bitterness does turn into anger. 
But if, if you don't check yourself, that anger will turn into rage and that thing will turn into something. It'll take on a whole life of itself. Mm -hmm. Really will. And, and, and I mean, I know people like that. They, they just been that way for a long time, but they don't realize that that's what they, they're told. That's just the way I am. That's not just the way you are because that's, that's not the way you are. God, you are God did not create way. you that way. God did not create you that way. He didn't. I don't right. know what happened to you to get you to that point, but God did not create you that way. Mm -hmm. He did not create you bitter. He did not create you angry. He did not create you to be in walking around in rage and jealous of people and not happy for uh, for people when they when they have um you know something nice that happens to them or something they have a you know you don't have a, a children but you're angry because somebody else is pregnant like that's 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 like that's a lot. You when somebody is at that point. You know, and even me, when I like I said, it didn't affect me that way, but it affected me in the way. Oh my goodness, that was the other thing. I absolutely didn't even realize how I hated men. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so when men, so when men would come to me and oh, you better not even look at me. Oh, um, it was so bad. Like I, I would cut them down to like <gasps> they would feel this big by the time I got finished with them. Like that's kind of where I was. And they would be like, oof. I remember one time, that's what the guy said to me. He's like, whoa, who hurt you? I was just like, mm, do you really want to, you have time, you have time to talk? Because I, I have a story for you. <laughs> but God had to heal, deliver, and set me through, set me free yeah. from all of that. But then I like to tell people, really, God can do it for you. He can do it. And you know if you're bitter. You do know it. You know if you're bitter. Like we want to act like we don't know. You know if you are um, angry to the point of being enraged. Like, like you know it because because of the things you're saying, the the reactions that you're giving off to other people, the way you're feeling on the inside of yourself. You mm -hmm. know, like we know when something's not right. And so I always tell people when you be honest with yourself, when you get to that point where you really want to be honest with yourself, well then you need to really start. Um, seeking God for healing, but then also we know faith without works is dead. So right. no, you have to actually, if you, if that, if be honest with yourself, because I knew I had to go deeper. I had to get some professional help because I had a lot of deep wounds, man. <laughs> Those roots were deeply embedded. Right. And in I me. think abuse, honestly, I think that's one of the crazy wicked parts about abuse or trauma or even going through divorce is that it, it creates a lot of deep wounds and yeah. um, it, it, it to the point where like you, you have so many of them, you don't even know until you get a trigger and then something happens and then you respond in a negative way. Right. And I do, I do most definitely advocate for anybody who's been through abuse, trauma or divorce to seek out professional help because yes. that's a sign of strength. That's a sign of saying- It is a sign know, of strength. I yeah. cannot do this by myself on my own. I need help. And there's times where we need help. And I had to get help. You know what I mean? I, I had, had to get help. I know I had to get help. And I and know I definitely had a lot of people praying for me. They yeah. may not say it, but I know I definitely had a lot of people praying for me because they saw they saw my pain. They saw yeah. my hurt. I carried it. Like somebody even told me like I carried it like a dark cloud and I never even saw it. It, like it is dark. It's very dark. It's dark. I mean, the, it, it's dark. And and when people, when you walk into a room, people can feel that. Bitter. Oh, here she comes. Well, you, I'm telling you, because I know people who are bitter. It's like when they come in a the room, they hope they change the whole atmosphere. It's just like, oh my God, here, here she comes. Mm -hmm. Here she comes. Nobody wants to be around you. And that's just the truth. Because right. nobody wants to hear what's going to come out of your mouth. You know, I mean, I know people who, you know, you'll be having a great day, wonderful day. You could be having a wonderful conversation with somebody. And when they walk in the room, here they go with all their bitterness. That stuff, that's like I said, that's a whole spirit that will jump off on you. Right. <laughs> you know, right. So you're wondering why later on you're feeling so weird. And it's because, oh, because you was a part of that whole bitter conversation. You right. know, so, right. um, so you, you, you have to, and that's what I recommend to anybody who have gone through trauma, who have gone through, you know, loss, abuse, whatever, whatever that root is, because there's a root to it. There's a reason yes. why you're bitter. You weren't born that way. Right. God did not create you that way. 
There's a reason why you're bitter. There's a reason why you can't be happy for anybody else. There's a reason why, you know, you can't, you can't celebrate anybody else's wins. But as soon as somebody tell you something, they, they just bought a new house. Now you're up. You, you just, ugh, why is it yeah. always happening for her? Mm -hmm. What? Well, maybe if you get your attitude straight, <laughs> adjust your attitude, maybe something good will happen to you. Right. You know, and it also, stop, stop, yeah. li stop li how can I say this? Stop, uh, I used to always say being on the outside of a window looking in. Sometimes you have to sh shut the blinds. Sometimes you have to walk away from the window. Sometimes you actually have to force yourself and stop dead in your tracks and stop comparing yourself with other people. Yes. Other people go through things. Other people have had their tough moments. They right. may not talk about them as much as you do. They may not have dealt with them as much as you dealt with them the way right. that you have. But I think how does everybody gets a turn. And honestly, I think God knows what's best for us. He doesn't want to give us any, allow us to have anything good when we have so much uh, rotten bitterness inside of us because bitterness is not going to do anything but kill it and destroy God's it. God's not going to bless nobody's bitterness. He's not going to bless your bitterness because guess what? Inside of that bitterness, which we haven't touched on yet, is unforgiveness. Because if right. you really forgave the person, then you would not still be bitter. And, and, and the Bible talks about Praying, even praying for your enemies. So if you're actually forgiving and praying for your enemies, it's going to be hard to stay bitter. Right. So that's like that's the process that I had to go through. I had to I had to not only um, you know seek the Lord for for healing, deliverance, and to be set free, but I had to also seek professional help, and I had to also forgive my abuser. Right. I had to forgive my abuser. Because as long as I was harboring all of that unforgiveness that was turning into bitterness, that was turning into anger, and that was turning into rage, he he was all, he was going on with his life. Like he was exactly. affected. He was not affected by me going through all that. Right. No. Exactly. So, so who are you really hurting? You're and I know people who say, well, no, I will never forgive. Well, that the joke is on you because unforgiveness is really like, you know, feeding yourself poison. You know, you 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 harboring all that unforgiveness, and and we know statistically unforgiveness and bitterness and bitterness will have it can make you sick, obviously emotionally, mentally, and it definitely can make you sick in your body. There's yes, a lot can. of disease and even certain types of cancer that are attached to right. bitterness was, and yeah, unforgiveness. Yep. Yes. Yes, so, most definitely. Because honestly. I know of someone who um, was very bitter um, and this, her marriage was like 30 years ago. And, you know, it was long that her, her ex was long gone. She had married several times over after that, but she had never forgiven him to the point where she was so bitter that she brainwashed her children and fed them that. And then they grew up, you know, harboring hatred and bitterness yeah. and stuff like that at the fan, at the, at the family members. And, and and I'm not saying this, how can I say this negative way, but she harbored so much bitterness, even when she moved on and got married, that that she ended up getting sick with cancer. Mm. And, no, and there's, there's definitely statistics that that um that prove scientific scientifically that there is sickness and disease that is attached to unforgiveness and bitterness. You know, because if you think about all the emotions, like I like I was saying, when I um when I would get angry back then, I didn't just get angry. Like I remember I, um, as a matter of fact, I was sick back then. Now that I think about it and it makes so oh. much sense. It makes so much sense. I would get so tensed in my body. Like the kids were doing this and, and doing all these uh, motions. That's how I was when something didn't go right or if this, if my day didn't go right or if somebody said something to me that it was like, so I was always tensed up and stressed out. Back then, now that I think about it, is when I had a lot of back issues. At one point, I was bedridden. I couldn't get out because I couldn't walk with my back. I had so many problems with my back. And the doctor told me back then that by the time I turned 40 years old, I would be in a wheelchair. Yeah. And I, I attribute a lot of that to my, my, my bitterness and my rage and my unforgiveness and my anger and all of that. 
um, mm -hmm. because it was all just sitting in my back and in my neck and in my body. It was just working its way down. It was working its way down. And so, like I said, I had to be healed, delivered, and set free from that. And I had to start, you know, I had to just totally turn my life around and start taking care of me. I started, I started working. That's why I'm big on working out to this day. I started working out because I remember praying and asking God, what is it that I can do so that when I turn 40, this doctor's prophecy doesn't come true, come true. Right. And God began to tell me, you have to start taking care of you. You have to start eating right. You have to get rid of all that stress. You have to get rid of all that stress. And, 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 and I started changing my diet. I start, I, I, I shut, shut it down with the stress. I eliminated stress in my life. And anybody that was coming through with the stress, you had to go. And I'm even like that to this day. You, I don't let people stress me out. You cannot stress me out because I can't allow that to, um, I'm trying to live a healthy life. Right, <laughs> so exactly. God wants us whole. He doesn't want us all, you know, there, there's a reason why that scripture is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, we, that if we don't forgive, our father in heaven will not forgive us. There, there's a reason for that. Well, God because, has a reason for everything. Yeah, yeah, it's a reason because God knows that if we continue living like that, that we're going to make ourselves sick. Yeah, not we only we're going to make ourselves sick, we're going to make other people sick too. Right. The people we around us. Our early grade for you holding will, you really to will. That, that unforgiveness, which is, is basically attached to the root of bitterness. Because yes. like you said, like it's a root and like a root of a tree, it spreads it out. It spreads like out. Branches it out. spreads so out. It branches out and it takes hold. Yes. Of, it, it takes root. It's unforgiveness. It's like, here's bitterness and here's the root right here attached to it. And and I think one of the honest things though, I, I will honestly say that is very tough about forgiving the abuser is because, especially for someone like me, I've always had a strong sense of justice, you know? um what's what's right is right you know like like legally like I've always had a strong sense of justice mm -hmm. and I felt like at the time he was getting away with the harm that he had done to me no court no law or anything would do anything you know except for you know arrest them and keep them overnight but you know I just felt like at the time he was not getting what I felt like he deserved right and so um when somebody used to say to me back then, when people used to say to me back, well, Renee, you know, you eventually have to forgive and you eventually have to let it go. Like I had a few people tell me that. It made me angry because it's like, what do you mean forgive him? Forgive him for what? Because see, <laughs> right. in, 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 in my mind back then, and I think a lot of uh, people who have gone through abuse- A lot of people feel that way. They feel like if you're forgiving your abuser, you're saying that the abuse is okay. You're okay in what That's they did. That's not true. That's not it's true. It's not about that. It has nothing to do with what they did because what they did is not okay and it will never be okay. It'll never be okay. On this side of heaven and before God. What it is is that you're saying to them, I release you from being responsible for my future and present happiness. I no longer hold you responsible for that anymore. Right. Yes, you did this particular thing to me and it was wrong, but I forgive you because you know, you know what? I have to move on with my life and right, I have right. to heal and I have to get better. So forgiveness is for you. Yeah. So forgiveness is, um, are you still there? It looks like you're frozen. Looks like you're frozen, but I'm gonna continue. Um, forgiveness. It's not for them. Oh and wait, funny. you you were frozen for a second. Yeah, I I saw I saw you and heard you though, and it looked like oh, you were okay. frozen on your end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I want to say about forgiveness. Forgiveness, because a lot of people feel like they don't want to forgive because they think again that's giving somebody that that's saying that what they did was right. That's number one. That's not true. That's not why we're forgiving. We're not forgiving based on the fact that what the person did was they were, they were right to do what they did. It has nothing to do with that. And then sometimes people think, well, if I forgive, well, what does that mean? That means that I have to hang out with them and be my best friend. No, forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation. Now, there are times that we can forgive somebody depending on the situation, depending on the offense, and, and you may reconcile. Who knows? 
But that's not the reason why we forgive. We forgive because first of all, first and foremost, it's gonna set you free. <laughs> yes. So that you're no longer bound to that hurt, so that you're no longer bound to that offense, so that you're no longer bound to all of those emotions that's keeping you bitter and angry and enraged and, and all of those negative ungodly emotions. So once you decide to forgive and really forgive and really let go, well, now God can bless you because guess what? When we don't forgive, I call unforgiveness a blessing blocker. You're actually blocking your own blessings. And so while you're looking at other people wondering why God's doing it for them and not doing it for you, well, you've already blocked your blessings because mm -hmm. it's more important for that person that decided to not forgive. It's more important for them to hold on to the unforgiveness than it is for, for them to remove you know, that, that block and allow God to bless them. So you, we have a choice. You either continue to hold on to the bitterness and, and uh, angry, angry self and unforgiveness and continue to not be blessed. Right. <laughs> and continue to cause more destruction. Or you right. can forgive and allow God and open that door, allow God to open that door to begin to bless you to have a better life. Right. So and either, I think that's what yeah. it was for me that ultimately persuaded me to forgive because I wanted to be happy in my life. I wanted to be able to move on. I wanted to be able to have peace um, and, and you know, it, have those things that I always look forward to. And, and, and there was a part of me that knew that if I didn't forgive, then I wouldn't be able to let it go. And then that unforgiveness would affect my future relationships and friendships with, with Yeah, and it will. <laughs> it will. As, it, as it had. And um, yeah, but I, it's funny because I remember being in divorce care group and um, I had typed up a letter to give because we had we're going through the divorce and we both had lawyers and I had typed up a letter for him for my lawyer to give to his lawyer to give to him. And at this particular time, he um, had married. He had, now here's the thing. He actually had remarried three months after our divorce decree. So that says that he was with someone who had proposed to her and everything while he was still legally married to me. So you talking about giving an obstacle <laughs> to forgiving that was one of the toughest things for me. It was like, how dare you? First you do the abuse, then you do this. It was like, as if I, I felt like at the time I didn't matter to him. But anyway, when well, I you, came- you didn't, to, you didn't matter to him. <laughs> huh? I said, you did not matter to him. And you had to be okay with that. You didn't matter to him. Right. But I met <laughs> like, I felt like at that point, like he never, like I never mattered to him. That's oh, I get it. I get what you're saying. Like okay. I never mattered to him. That's, that's what it felt like okay. to me at, at that time. Right. Now I don't care, but, <laughs> right. but I typed him a letter and the letter I said to him, I forgive you. And I said, but listen, make better choices with your new wife. Congratulations on you, you know, your wedding nuptials but please make better choices. Mm -hmm. Learn from your mistakes in the past and make better choices in the future. And I wish you well, and you know, and things like that. And it was a way of me forgiving. It was a way of giving me peace. It was a way right. of letting me go. And it was also a way of, of just, you know, and then just, you know, saying, listen, it's, it's not about me fighting for, for you, I, you know, like, because that's what I think he thought at the time. It's not a, about that. But it's funny because about three years ago, he called me and we ended up having a 45 minute conversation. Now, any other time, it, he never called, never called. Since we've been separated, divorced, he never called. This one time he calls. And usually when I would see his name or hear his name, I would cringe and my blood would boil. And at first I wasn't going to answer the phone. And then something said, go ahead and pick up the phone and just hear what he has to say. So of course he still had some of his excuses. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, well, you know, I just want you to know that I forgive you. And he says, you forgive me for real. Like you, you, you forgive me. Like, like he was shocked. I don't know, you know, if he met that or whatever like that. Right. And I said now, and I want to be honest with you, I said I was not the best wife that I could have been either. I was not perfect. 
I said, um, but I was not the best wife that I could have been or should have been. And I want you to forgive me too right. on those things. And, you know, he said, yeah. And I, and I said to him and I said, you know, and I, and I'll continue to pray for you. And he was so shocked that I prayed for him. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that was a front, if somebody was listening in the background, but that's not my problem. But that's not your that's problem. Not that's right. God. You know, I just know that I said it out loud in the open air. And honestly, I think of forgiveness is a daily walk. It, it really is. No, it's it not really is. Wake up overnight and say, you know what? I'm just going to forgive my abuser. It doesn't happen like that. I think right. a lot of people who have not gone through that will rush you into forgiveness. You have to do it when you get to a point when you're ready. And it is a daily walk. And even though, like I said, that was three years ago, we had that conversation. It is still a daily walk. I still have to watch out for triggers. I still have to, you know, remind myself, right. Renee, don't go down that path. You've forgiven them. Right, right. You, know, you can't, you know, like my anger or my regrets with whatever only gets goes but so far. Only yeah. allows to go but so far because I've moved on, you know, and I don't want to go backwards. I want to go forward. So yeah. I have to always remind myself of that, but it is a constant daily walk and I think it's tough to forgive honestly when that person has not admitted they're wrong but see and that's that the thing but that's the thing about forgiveness when we forgive and this is where people get get it twisted when we decide to really forgive somebody it's it, it can't it can never be about a person um saying all right you're right I did you wrong because they may never say that they may never admit that they did you wrong they may never admit Mm -hmm. most of the time that's the way it is so it can't right. forgiveness can't be about that forgiveness can't be about you know let's say if you you forgave somebody and then um and then them, them acknowledging that you know oh, okay you forgave me because some people will be like i don't even know what you're talking about forgive forgive for, forgive for me for what i didn't even do anything so that's right. that's a whole big issue and then it can't it can't be about whether or not they get uh you know somebody they get vengeance because god says vengeance is his right because so, that's what people think well he never got paid back for what he did to me like all of those things will hold you back all those things will keep you bound when we forgive for true forgiveness true forgiveness is you could care less you don't care right. whether the person um you know feels remorse you don't care you right. don't care whether whether something bad happens to them. You don't you don't you don't wish anything bad to happen on them. Like we should never wish anything bad on anybody. Right, right. Or or and, and if something happen, happy, if something good happens to them, we truly should. I mean, you don't have to go out and celebrate, but you shouldn't be sitting there because this is a sign. There's a lot of signs that will tell us whether or not we really forget. Yeah, and I just hope he makes the right decisions. <laughs> but we don't even you don't even care about that. That's none of your business whether or not he makes right decisions. Like, why would you even care about what no, decisions like he makes? No, not like that. But I mean, like you know, you know, how you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. I mean, but I but that's that's him. That's not you. Not but, you. If, but if you don't, then that's on you. You know, that's I think it. that's one of the things too that made me for also encouraged to forgive because. I feel like, you know what? I do not want to stand before God in heaven. Right. Like God doesn't make mistakes with his word. He says what he says and boom, that's it. And I do not want to get before Christ in heaven. And then he does not forgive me because right. I didn't forgive other people exactly. for the wrong that they did to me. Not only that, but you know what's funny? We as people do, we want forgiveness, but Sometimes we all, we always want forgiveness and, and we we always want forgiveness and and you were saying you hope he learned he he maybe he did I maybe mean, that he did not hope you know what like, I mean? that, like that maybe he hope. didn't maybe he did maybe he didn't but if he never does that's not even your problem or your business right but i mean like that is my positive <laughs> hope you know what i mean like that right. is my positive hope for him that is one of my prayers for him yeah now, okay that's yeah god so when you're praying for him i get what you're yeah, saying god yes. gives people free will choice if he chooses not to do that that's between him and god he has to answer to god for his right. own stuff i got to answer to god for me and what i was saying is i do not want to stand before christ on judgment day and i end up going to hell because of me not forgiving him no. right because he, he moves go, on with his he life so yeah <laughs> if he chooses to go there 
and I don't mean this to be, you know, cursing, but if he chooses to go to hell, then it's because he did it his own self. He's not taking me with him. Right. So, <laughs> right. That's 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 basically how I look at it. Yeah. Like, you know, and look, then I looked at too when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he died for the sins of the entire universe. He died on the cross, not only for people who would come to him and acknowledge him as Lord and ask for forgiveness. But he also died for all the people who continue to be sinners and don't care anything about him. He and this, and look at but look at his look at Jesus' prayer for the people who put him on the cross and beat him to a pole. Yes. He yes. said, "Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do." Right, right. We are supposed to be followers of Christ, right? Yes. And I'm not saying it's easy because it, it took me a while to get to the point where. I was able to forgive. And then even there were times when I thought I forgave, but I really didn't forgive. But let me tell you when I knew I forgave, when he got sick and I helped to take care of him. And oh. I remember, you talked about that movie, The Diary of a Mad Black Woman. And I remember standing over him because at this point he couldn't do much. And oh. I remember standing over him and I was going to think, wow, I could like literally do anything to you at this point, like if I wanted to. Like if I was an evil, hateful woman, I could do anything at this point. And mm. that's when, and I, and I remember him looking at me and he said, he said, why are you looking at me like that? I said, because you know, I'm thinking some stuff. <laughs> he said, he said, uh, I said, but you know what, but it's all good. I said, because I forgive you. I forgive you. He says, really? You forgive me? I said, absolutely. I forgive you. I, 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 I forgive you. I am totally over it. I forgive you. Life goes on because I have to have my mind right so I can continue to raise my son. So I can't be a, walking around talking about, oh, what he did to me. Oh, he did it. Okay, yeah, you did it. It's done. I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot of hurt and wounds that's attached to what you did. I'm not going to say it was, it was not something that, that's, that's going to take a, a, a it's going to be a process to heal from, mm -hmm. but I'm going to get over it. Okay, I'm moving on yes. with my life. Okay. Yes. And so, but yeah, but um, but I did forgive him. And then I had to forgive him, especially because looking at my son every day, that's your dad. I, I never want my son to think that his mother hates his dad or, 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 and that was the other thing. And this is the other thing. I never said anything negative to my son about his father. Never. And I never allowed anybody else to say anything negative to my son about his father now mm -hmm. if I, my son wasn't around and i was talking to the girls listen i went in but if my <laughs> son was around everybody knew that you do not say anything negative about my son's father around him that's just in my household that is not allowed because that's still his dad at the end of the day right and that's, I, and that's the way i raised my son that that is your dad he's gonna always be your dad and but we're not gonna always be husband and wife, but he will always be your dad, I will always be your mom. And that's how I tackle that. And I thank God that I did that because that way my son could never grow up and say, Well, you kept me from my dad, or you hated my dad. Like my son, there's nothing negative that my son could ever say I did to his dad. Like, because no, I wasn't raising my son like that. Because right. see what was gonna happen if I did choose to do that. Then bitterness would have take, took taken root in my son, right? You know, so we that's we got to get it together because if you don't, especially people that have children, your children are watching. Children are always watching. Like when they were <laughs> when they were mocking me, that's because they observed some stuff in me. So yeah. I always tell parents yes, they do. Listen, they see everything. They see everything, even things that you think you're hiding from them. And so yeah. we have to get it together. Yeah, mm -hmm. that happened. But what are you going to do about it? We didn't have any control over the person that abused us at that time. We did not have control over that. But now you have control over some things. Take control of your life. And this is for anybody that's watching this. You now have permission to take control over your life. That's Don't right. blame anybody for where you are now because any mistakes you make now, any it's mess ups you make up now, it's all on you. Because every day that you wake up, the guy wakes you up, you have a choice to move on, to move forward. I always mm -hmm. like to say every new day, and I just truly believe this in my heart, every true day, every new day that God wakes us up gives us all a new opportunity to do things bigger and greater. So we all yeah. have the same opportunity every day that God wakes us up. So yeah. I can't wake up every day 
all these years later talking about, well, I was abused. And so this is why I am the way I am. And you don't and know what I went through. After a while. The like, story gives me a break. While. Change you know, your like, story. Yes. I think I posted something like that. <laughs> Change it. Wait a minute. I'm going to actually pull that you up. Used to say Change that and your story. Had- And somebody else I know used to always say it, change your story. And it's funny because years ago when they said it, change your story, I kept saying, why in the world are they saying that? That makes no sense to me. How can I change my story? And this happened in the past and I'm still suffering from a blah, 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 blah. But it wasn't until, like I said, I had to go through things to realize change your story means don't let your past. That same old story. The rest of your your future. Your future, I, yes, you you can't, you cannot do that. You have to let it go. Like they say on Frozen, let it go. Yeah, let it go. this is this but is what I posted to- this morning, and and tears of breakthrough. I posted today. I have the power to change my story today, yeah. and that's a declaration right there. Today, when you wake up tomorrow morning, who's ever watching this and you feel like you've got the same old sad story from what they did to you, whoever they are, whatever they did to abuse you or misuse you, just wake up that new, you're going to have a whole new opportunity. When you wake up tomorrow, God's giving you a whole new new opportunity to do things bigger and better and greater than you've ever done before. And just to clear this, today I have the power to change my story. We mm-hmm. all have the power to change our story. We can't expect somebody else to change it. We have to change it. That's right. And and how do we change it? We change it by changing our thinking. Change it starts in your mind. The battle is in the mind. Change your mindset because the things that we keep up set our minds to the most we will become. So if we sit around and think about all the negative things that's ever happened to us, that's what's going to come out of our mouth. And right. then that's what and that's what's going to show up in our life because those are the actions that are and the habits that we're going to create. Right. Yeah. So change your change your mindset, change your words, change your life. (laughs) Like it's just it's just it's like, and it's going to take work. It's not easy, and it's not going to be easy. Right. But you know, I believe you can do it. Anybody can do it. I had to do it. Yeah. And like like you said, it's a it's a lifelong process. So there are going to be days that you're going to have triggers and take you back. But now, what are you going to do? I I always tell people it's okay to wallow in it for a minute. (laughs) Wallow in it for a minute. But I don't want to wallow in it at all. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I'm just saying for me, everybody's different. Right. But for me, if I have those days, it's okay to say, okay, I'm going to allow myself this time to just kind of, you know, reflect on some things and, and allow myself this moment to, to, to hurt a little bit or whatever, whatever the emotions are. And I give myself that time, right? Okay. But guess what? Time is up. Time to get yourself showered, get yourself dressed, get yourself out and do something. Do something right. for you. Right. So there's nothing wrong with allowing, because, you know, sometimes, depending on what the person's uh, hurt is, you know, I talk to women all the time who went through some horrific things in their life. And right. so there are going to be triggers. There are going to be times when when something happens, you know, to trigger something that we're just going to take you back to that place. Okay. Follow it for a minute. Notice I said a minute. Don't allow that thing to consume you to the point right. where you're going back to, 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 to being bound to that thing, that person, place, or thing, whether right. it's an abuser or whatever that situation is, don't allow it to consume you. So well, Pastor Carolyn, I hear you and, and I agree with you, but I honestly think that when you are first making the decision to take those baby steps forward, to heal, to forgive, to come up out of the bitterness and begin to change your story. I think it at that, at those beginning phases, wallowing in it for a minute will end up being an hour. A oh, day. well, okay. We yeah. Well, and, and I, I, I mean, that's just me. I could be I, wrong. And I, I mean, everybody's like different, but that's why, different. that's why right. I said but a I minute. For me, I could, yeah, I could not wallow. And everybody's different. So you need because every, when, trust you should me, know I your limits. Enough for me, you, and everybody else that's watching this recording. Everybody should know, you should know your limits. You should know, and that's the, and that goes back to just knowing who you are and knowing who you know are limits. And, and know your <laughs> limits. You know what I mean? Because I know that there are times when I might have triggers and I just, I, I need a moment. I need a moment to kind of collect myself where not, not that I'm going to allow myself to spiral into no depression or anything, but 
but I, I just need a moment. I, need, I I call it me time. I need some me time. Okay. Okay. But again, while I'm in it for a minute, I got to get myself up. And I talk to myself, girl, you better get yourself up, get yourself dressed, get yourself showered, get yourself cute, do whatever it is you have to do. Go get yourself a massage, go get your nails done, go do something for you. Right. Okay. Don't just lay there day after day after day after day, reminiscing on your hurt, reminiscing on your pain, reminiscing on your trauma, reminiscing on all that drama. Like, no, you gotta, you gotta pull yourself out of that. And then it helps to, to have, uh, I, I always talk about your tribe, people in your circle, you know, that's so important too, because the people in your circle are important. If right. you're hanging around people who, who they, that they bringing it up and y'all sitting there comparing, yeah, girl, remember what, uh, no, we're not going to talk about that. We're, right. we're not doing that. You want to, you want to have people in your circle that's going to encourage you, empower you, lift you up. You know what yes. I mean? And, and when they when they see that you're falling back into certain moods, they can say, mm -mm, are you all right? I see that, you, you know, you, you're going through some stuff. You can be honest. I say, yeah, I did. I did. Had a, I had a trigger, you know, but I'm OK. I'm working my way through this. They can check on you. They can encourage you. They're going to pull you out and help pull you out of that thing. So your circle is important. Your tribe is so important. Right. And like you said, sometimes you have to change your tribe. And I think for me, that is one of the miracle blessings out of going through what I went through. You know what I mean? Like they say, after a storm always comes the sun. Yeah. And that's one of the suns. The, the thing that came out for me is that I have met some wonderful people of God, you know, who would call me, would check on me, who would pray with me, who would right. stop me in my tracks and say, hey, wait exactly. a minute, let's refocus. Let's yes. get it back together. You know what I mean? I've met you. I've met, you know, um, my spiritual godmother. I've met, you know, like so many people yeah. now that they will actually call me if they have not heard from me in a few days right. or a few weeks, you know, they will actually call me and say, what's going on? Because I haven't heard from you. Or even they would be praying. And I guess the spirit or Holy Spirit would show them, okay, wait a minute, you slipping down this path or you slipping back out into the right. world. That's what's right. going on? You need to bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it on back together because together. this is not where, where God wants you to be. Right. And I mean, it has, that's been one of the beautiful things about it. And as, as I don't know, as much as I hate saying it, if it was not for the abuse of the trauma that I went through, I would not have met these wonderful people. Wow. Yeah. So God has a way of turning our everything around for our good. He absolutely mm -hmm. does. And, and, you know, once we make that decision to uh, forgive and to, to, to get healed, like for real, like who the sun sets free is free indeed. Who the yes, sun sets yes. free is free for real. Once we really make that decision, then God will begin to put you in places where you will meet people who can pour into you, that, that who can lift you up and, and be there for you and encourage you, you know, when you need that. Because um, God is faithful. But, but if you're bitter, nobody wants to be around a bitter person. Nobody wants to be around a person angry all the time. Nobody wants to be around a person that raised negative. Nobody wants to be like that unless they're like that too. And so um, I'm going to kind of end on that. But um, uh, Renee, I'm going to ask you to just kind of close us out in prayer. Just pray for people who are struggling with bitterness and unforgiveness, um, maybe anger and rage. You know, can you just kind of pray for them? And then we're going to close out. Sure. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you have allowed us to have, to have a conversation about bitterness and unforgiveness, Lord. May whoever is watching this video recording, Lord God, learn from this. May their eyes be open. May their ears be open, Lord. May their heart be pricked, Lord, and may they make a change for the better for themselves and to have a closer relationship with you, God. I speak healing right now over them in the name of Jesus. I speak mental, emotional, and physical healing in the name of Jesus, Lord God. May you just do a supernatural thing in their life, God. Also, God, surround them around people that you would have them be around, Lord God, that will speak life to them, that will encourage them, that would strengthen them, that would help build them up on every leaning side, Lord God. God, we know your son walked this earth. He felt a lot of the same pain and emotions that we have felt. And Lord God, I just ask right now that you touch who was ever going through or struggling with bitterness and, and unforgiveness in their heart, Lord God, that you just touch them in a new and different way, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us this evening. And thank you, Renee. This was a great conversation and we'll be doing this again um, with some yes. other topics. Thank you so much. And everybody have a great and marvelous evening. Be encouraged and not discouraged. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.